Hi everyone, I'm um, Alex Bronson. I'm doing a PhD at the University of Leiden and I'm affiliated with the uh, Faculty of Archaeology and the uh, Leiden Centre of Data Science. Um, and today I'll be talking about using text mining to unlock the hidden knowledge in Dutch archaeological reports. So I think before we've just been looking at basically the photographs and reports, I'm going to be diving into the text bit of reports. Um, so I think we're all familiar with this problem. Um, you're, you need some information for research that you're doing, and you're basically presented with a load of different books. Um, although nowadays it tends to be more digital than an actual library. Um, but out of all this information, the only two books that you really need are this one and this one. So how do we then find those two books that are relevant to your research? Um, well, that's where text mining can, can help. Um, in my particular project, I've got um, 60,000 Dutch excavation reports, and that's over one terabyte, terabyte of, of data. Um, these are digitally available, uh, but at the moment you can only search through the uh, metadata of these reports, not the actual text inside the, um, the documents. Um, so basically at the moment this means that uh, researchers have to read the entire document collection to find information that's hidden on a page somewhere in one of the reports, uh, which is basically impossible. Um, to provide a bit of background information, I'll first uh, describe how these documents are currently being um, created, deposited and accessed, um, and then I'll discuss the problem of archaeological concepts and how we can integrate these into a uh, clever search engine. So how did we end up with so many reports? Um, well, this graph shows the um, number of registered excavations in the Netherlands. Um, let's see. Yeah, from 1900 uh, up until now. And as you can see, there was basically almost no uh, registered excavations uh, from 1900 till about 1990. And then in comes the Malta Convention, or the uh, Valletta Treaty. Uh, which is basically a uh, European agreement aimed at protecting the archaeological remains. And part of that was to also um, properly archive your reports. Now, so we have a little bit of a spike there, but then in 2003, this is actually implemented into Dutch law. And from that point onwards, we see a massive spike in the number of reports um, up there. And then um, at the moment, we're looking at about 4,000 reports being added each year. So these are just some examples of these reports. Um, and these are what's known as grey literature, uh, meaning they're published outside of the uh, traditional commercial and academic publishing routes. And they're often unknown to many archaeologists. However, the data in these reports can be of immense value, as long as we can find the information that we need in this big data collection. So digital availability for these reports has been a problem for a long time. But luckily, in the last decade or so, uh, DUNTS, or Data Archiving and Network Services, uh, a data repository in the Netherlands, has been working to archive these reports together with the associated research data and some metadata as well. The RCE, or the um, Government Agency of Heritage in the Netherlands, also makes the reports available online via the ARCHIS system, which is basically a um, national database of information about archaeology. It's estimated that between them, we've got about 70% of all these um, so-called Malta reports. So access to the documents isn't a real issue anymore, um, but finding the right documents for your research definitely is. So I've talked about metadata, in case anyone's not aware, it's basically um, uh, a broad description of a document uh, in general terms. So you've got the, the author, the title, some information like that. Um, for these reports, for example, you might have a report that says um, some temporal information. So we know this excavation excavated stuff from the Iron Age and Roman period. We might have some interesting keywords in the description, such as circular ditch, rubbish pit, and so on. However, archaeologists generally will want to find, uh, search more uh, fine grains. They might be interested in a single Bronze Age find on this site, but didn't warrant including into the temporal metadata. Or they might be uh, interested in a particular find type that's too specific to mention in the description. Um, so what we need to do really is uh, look through all of the text and not just this metadata. Now, this can be done by using full text search. Um, 
well-known example is Google. And this will basically make it possible to search through all of the text in a collection of documents. That's already a lot better, um, but it doesn't account for synonymy and polysemy, with synonymy being um, two words having the same meaning and polysemy, one word having multiple meanings. So to give you an example uh, of synonymy, we've got the Neolithic, but that can also be written as the Late Stone Age. But then there's also a range of dates, like 3500 BC, 5000 to 4000 BP, 4th millennium BC, and so on. All these different uh, dates that fall within the Neolithic. And then the other way around, we've got um, terms like Swifterbond, which is also a time period in the Neolithic. But that's also uh, an excavation event. It's a type of pottery, and it's also a specific place in the Netherlands. Um, but for example, if you search for Swifterbond in Google, it will give you information about the place. Um, so what we need to do really is um, find these entities in the text and disambiguate them. Um, and this can be done by a technique called named entity recognition, or NER. And in a nutshell, um, it goes through text like this, and then it just um, highlights the terms that um, are specific concepts, and it says what type of concept it is. Um, now this can be done in different ways, the main ones being a rules-based approach, where you write rules to find these words. Um, or you can use machine learning, which is a form of artificial intelligence, uh, which is what I'm doing in this project. Specifically, I'm using um, conditional random fields, uh, which is a type of machine learning particularly suited to sequence data. Uh, in this case, the, the words in a sentence being a sequence. And like all supervised machine learning algorithms, it learns from examples. Um, so you feed it a couple of examples, well, loads of examples, and then it will be able to classify new text. Um, so the steps to do this is you first need to create a, an annotated corpus, with the corpus being a collection of documents. Um, then you need to look at features, those are the attributes of the words that the, the algorithm will look at, and then you can actually train the model. So the first step is to create this annotated collection of documents. Um, so this is basically where an archaeologist will go through um, a document and manually highlight all the relevant concepts in that text. Now luckily I don't have to do that myself, that's been done in a previous project, in the, uh, the Ariadne pro project. So I've got eight documents of various lengths, um, in total around 500,000 words and uh, just over 11,000 annotations. Unfortunately, these have been tagged in Microsoft Word with the highlight function, uh, which made it really difficult to actually extract that information from the documents. Um, but I managed to use some intermediate formats and lots of scripting to convert this eventually into um, Folia XML, which is a XML standard specifically for linguistic annotations and is used quite widely in this, this field. So the next step is then to create um, features for the algorithm, algorithm to look at. Um, so these are basically the attributes of words uh, from, which, which, from which the algorithm can then learn about these words and use those to predict uh, future words. Um, for my first exper experiment, I've used a fairly basic list, uh, which includes the word in lowercase, the part of speech, so that's uh, whether it's a noun or a verb, for example, um, the word shape, which is whether well, there's any uppercase letters, uh, numbers, dashes, and so forth. Um, the word suffix, which lasts three and two letters, whether it's at the beginning or an end, end of a sentence, and whether the, the word occurs in a thesaurus. In this case, I'm using the Dutch archaeology thesaurus, the ABR. And then I get all these features for what's called a three-word window. So I'm looking at the word before and after the current word as well. So you get a bit of uh, context information. So then train the model, and um, these are my first results, uh, with the precision being a measure of uh, when the algorithm thinks something is a concept, how often it's right. Uh, the recall is a measure of, out of all the concepts in the text, how many does it actually find? And the F1 score is a, a harmonic mean of the two. Um, so as you can see at the moment, I'm only focusing on three entity types, so that's artifacts, dates, and materials. Um, the precision is between 60 and 70 percent, which is okay. Recall a lot, a lot lower at only 40 percent, um, and yeah, that makes the average F1 score of roughly 50 percent. Um, so these these numbers are promising, but fairly low. Um, I think 
two possible reasons for that could be that the um, the actual corpus that I've got, there's some issues with it where entities have been tagged wrong or whole sections have been missed uh, with tagging. Um, and also the thesaurus that I'm using isn't actually made for linguistic research. So words in that word list aren't written the way that you would find them in text. So actually matching that has, has proved to be quite difficult. So to give you an idea of what the system looks like at the moment, I've actually um, made a front end to this as well. Um, and this, this is version 0.2 of ACNES, which is archaeological gray literature named Entity Search. Quite a mouthful. Um, and for this version, I've used the, uh, the named entity recognition I've just described and indexed it in Elasticsearch. That's just an off-the-shelf search engine. And I've done this for 100 documents that were randomly selected from my um, from a data set. And this is basically a proof of concept as well as a, a point of a start of discussion with archaeologists when I'm trying to speak to them about what they want from a system. It tends to be easier to actually show them something they can critique than to just ask, what do you want? Because it seems to be not as productive. Um, yeah, and the link is acnesearch.nl if anybody wants to have a look at it. So when you start up the system, you, um, you get this um, query builder, which basically lets you build a query using Boolean and or logic. Um, so in this example, I've set up um, a query that searches for artifacts that are offslot, as such for flint flake. And then um, they also need to be related to the time period, which is either the Neolithic or the Bronze Age. And when you fire the query off, you get um, a number of results. Um, and then if you click on preview page, you get an HTML version of the, the PDF page uh, with the words that you're looking for highlighted in the text. So here you can have a quick scan and see if this is what you're actually looking for. Um, if this is what you're looking for, you can go back and then click on get document from repository. And this will take you to, in this case, the DOMS repository, where you can get the full report as well as any um, research data that goes with it. So for future improvements, um, uh, the first two things I need to do is actually fix the corpus and um, do something with the thesaurus to make that a bit better. Um, for the corpus, I'm um, uh, putting together a group of students, archaeology students, that uh, will tag documents for me. So I'm basically creating a new um, annotated corpus. And hopefully that will increase the, um, the accuracy. And then I'm also uh, hoping to work with the State Service for Heritage to um, change the ABR thesaurus to add a new column, basically, of the word, um, but written like in natural text. Um, so hopefully that will be able to improve the accuracy as well. I'm looking in using a, a bigger word window. So currently I'm only looking at the word before and after it. I want to go to five or seven. Uh, so you get more context information. And hopefully that will increase the accuracy as well. And that's something I'm um, experimenting with at the moment is using uh, clustering techniques. Um, at the moment I'm playing with word to spec and fast text. Um, and these are both unsupervised machine learning algorithms that basically, uh, based on the context of a word, um, they place them in a high dimensional vector space. Now, it sounds quite complicated, um, but just to show you, if you actually make it into a two dimensional vector space, it's actually quite straightforward. So you place all these words on this graph based on, in this case, two variables, and then you can actually, once you're in that space, you can group them quite easily uh, using normal clustering techniques. In this case, I'm using um, k-means clustering, and that just groups these um, these words into groups. So we've got group one, those are artifacts, we've got an ax and an at. And then group two, we've got materials, so iron and bronze. And hopefully incorporating this group information as a feature will um, increase the, the accuracy as well. So at the moment I'm focusing on actually um, increasing the, the accuracy of the name of the entity recognition, um, but the overall project goals are to index uh, a big data set, get as many documents as possible from as many different sources as I can. Um, and then create um, an intuitive web application that should make searching quicker and better. Uh, put some ideas of searching on maps and plotting timelines and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and hopefully this will make it possible to answer research questions that were previously almost impossible to solve. Thank you.